This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. People of God, what a gift. What a beautiful day to be able to gather together in God's house and in God's presence and amongst all of us as we gather from many homes here together in God's home and in God's presence with one another. So on this day, um, if you're curious, maybe you forgot, we're in the middle of Stump the Pastor, so that's what this is up, because we'll all find out what's going to happen with that in a few minutes. We'll all find out. <laughs> so um, there are several announcements in the bulletin and in the weekly that I just um, uh, highlight and draw your attention to. A couple that I will um, highlight specifically this morning is progress is being made on the on the lift work the mason has been here and the mason has completed the work that they needed to do in order for accessibility solutions to come in and that's the next step so for accessibility solutions to come and then begin installing the actual lift so we're making great progress and uh, you can stay tuned. So in the meantime, that is still roped off for your safety and um, everybody's safety in the process. Bible school is just a few weeks away. It is hard to believe that it is just a few weeks away. We still have some slots that we would love to fill. If you know a child um, who falls in the, um, having made it through nursery school at least one year, um, all the way through fifth grade and would love to join us the week of July 10. We would love to have them and uh, you can call the church office to register or um, there's a link in the weekly that you can click on to sign up as well. And uh, in addition, by I think tomorrow, we'll be able to be sending out a list of some items that we know that we're going to need, need. Most of them are food items. So they will need to be brought in maybe the week leading up to the Sunday right before, which is, I think, July 9. Um, so Sunday, July 9 is when we'll need that food um, brought in by, all right? This is the last Sunday, the last full week for June's mission of the month, which, in which we are um, extending our gratitude to the nursery school teachers and the, the teaching aides and teaching assistants. So any missions, gift marked um, during the month of June marked for missions will go towards our mission of the month to um, surprise the gift, our gift with appreciation and gratitude to the nursery school teaching staff. Which means that next Sunday is the first Sunday of July and that means that we will celebrate communion. We will gather together around table and uh, so stay tuned to the weekly tomorrow to find out what the July mission of the month is, all right? Because now that you're out of school, we're gonna gear up for school. But stay tuned for more details. If for some reason you're like, man, I haven't gotten an email from the church or from Pastor Kendra since May 22, May 22, let me know. Because there seems to be some glitches in some emails but um if you haven't received one please let me know call the church office and uh and let me know or you can send me a text or an email and then we'll get that worked out hmm. that's everything wait there's one more there's one more so here's something that is starting tomorrow tomorrow from one to four is that what time i put in the bulletin one to four <laughs> I can't remember everything, you guys. One to four, every Monday afternoon, if you would like to come hang out on the porch or the patio at 135 Glen Street, that's where I moved to. There's a great porch that's only three or four steps up, but the patio is in the back and it's barrier free. Um, come hang out, we can visit. I have some iced tea and uh, we'll visit and check in. But that's going to be for the remaining of the summer, and so you'll want to stay tuned to the bulletin in the weekly for when those are happening every Monday from 1 to 4, but you're all welcome. I mean, it's a big porch, but if you all came, that would be. I'll get the easy up from church, and we'll sit on the lawn. How's that? Okay? But 
hopefully we'll be able we'll have a great time with that friends people of god the, the rest of everything is in in the bulletin and in the weekly check it out see how you can be engaged in the life and ministry here at, at fair street in the next few weeks with that whether this is your first time worshiping with us or you have been here all along regardless of who you are where you come from where you live the color of your skin who you love whatever language you speak or whatever it is that you think hinders you from belonging and being in this place please know and believe that your presence is a gift and we are grateful to god that you are here with us in these moments and as god has breathed us into this place and into god's presence in these moments and as we gather whether your week has been filled with chaos and uncertainty grief and sorrow joy and celebration it is in these moments where we can pause to settle in and rest in god's presence in these moments and maybe for just a split second we can set aside the chaos of our lives and the chaos of our world so that we can rest in God's presence in these moments so that we can be open to hearing God's word for us this morning. And so as we do each week, I invite you as we set aside and breathe out all the stuff of our lives, that we take that pause to breathe in God's love and in God's grace and in God's presence and breathe out all the stuff of our lives. So I invite you to join me as we breathe in and out. Breathing in God's love, in God's grace, and in God's welcome. As you're greeted by God this morning, grace and peace be to you from the one who is, who was, and is to come. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to stand as you are able to join in the call to worship that is in the bulletin. And then we will follow the call to worship by singing our opening hymn, number 577, Sing a New Church. You actually know the tune. The tune is very familiar, um, set to different words, beautiful words about singing a new church. So we will join our voices together. People of God, if today we hear God's voice in our hearts, we must follow it. If today we hear God's voice in our hearts, we must follow it. Come, everyone, let's sing to the Lord. Let us tell the world that God has saved us. Let us thank God from the bottom of our hearts. Let us sing songs of praise to God. If today we hear God's voice in our hearts, we must follow it. Come, let us bow down our heads and pray to God. And let us kneel before the God who made us. He is our God. We are his people. God loves us. If today we hear God's voice in our hearts, we must follow it. Today, if you hear the voice of God in your hearts, follow it. Do not grumble or argue the way the people in the desert did when everything didn't go the way they expected it to. If today we hear God's voice in our hearts, we must follow it. Still 
That's the goodness of creation. Plus the spirit's strong within. There to bring the vision promised. Run from seed of one that's Let us bring the gifts that differ. Splendid, varied ways, bringing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. Heroes of every nation, we are the children to come on up. Come on up. So don't get too comfortable on the steps. We're going to stand around the table a minute, okay? And you're not going to be up here that long right now. I know, now you're all like, what? How are you? Oh, that sounded convincing. Eh. Shall we try again? How are you? That's a little nice. It's summer. You don't have school. You graduated. You graduated, right? No. You moved up. Yes? You moved up. You all moved up, right? So, how are you this morning? Oh, well. I feel it. I feel it. I'm with you right there. So, what are you going to do this summer? Not school. Not sleep in summer school. Water park. Ooh. What are you going to do this summer? What? You are? Oh my goodness. I just finished school. Now I'm going to Disneyland? Video games. And play video games. Well, your brother goes to Disney. You're going to play video games, right? Oh, he is? You're going to let him go? That's awesome. That's awesome. So how many of you think, well, you're going to um, go to water parks, is that what you said? And Legoland? Summer plans. How many are going to go swimming this summer? Any, any pools, right? Playing in the water, maybe. So um, okay, I have just enough. I have something for you. I know. This is for your summer, but here's the thing. Um, I'm going to explain why I'm giving these to you in a little bit. So, because you're going to come up during the actual sermon and, um, and help me with something. So when you go back to your seats, that's when maybe your parent or grandparent can help you adjust these because otherwise we'd be here till Tuesday. All right? You want the green ones. And um, what color would you like? 
looking at the blue ones. You want the pink ones because they are you okay with purple and or did you want blue or are you good with those because I do have more so okay so what color I, I can't understand that pointing the blue green the green one oh, the, oh no those are mine these are these are mine I'm sorry these are the adult ones I, I know you want to see what they look like So when you go back to your seats, you want to change to the, okay. When you go back to your seats, um, okay. Whew. Now we got all sorts of trading going on. You guys want to swap out? You're good with those? I got to put these back on. Um, so when you go back to your seats, parents and grandparents, maybe if you can help just adjust them so that they can fit, because we're going to need these on. And now you're like, what in the world is happening today? Do you know the squeaks, by the way, when you squeeze the handle? Just a fun little fact. All right, so um, I'm not going to say a prayer with you right now because you're going to come back up in just a minute. So you can go back to your seats and we'll see you in a, in a few. Lord. Remember, it stumped the pastor, and the pastor gets to just take liberty and have fun and maybe stump a few people along the way, pastor included. Friends, sometimes we do like to look through life through a lens that is our own, and God calls us and invites us to live and look through a lens that has the love of God and God's love through everything that we look at, to be able to see one another with the love of God and the peace of God. And so in that, the psalmist models a transparent faith with these words, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And so we express our longing for God's leading by our own transparent confession as we pray together the prayer of confession that is in the bulletin. So I invite you to join me in prayer. God of love and justice, we long for peace within and peace without. We long for harmony in our families, for serenity in the midst of struggle. We long for the day when our homes will be a dwelling place for your love. Yet we confess that we are often anxious, we do not trust each other, and we harbor violence. We are not willing to take the risks and make the sacrifices that love requires. Look upon us with kindness and grace. Rule in our homes and in all the world. Show us how to walk in your path. Show us the mercy of our Savior. Fill us with your love and grace. Amen. People of God, hear this promise from the words of, the, of Ezekiel that God spoke through the prophet. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you. A new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you the heart of flesh. Hearing this promise and the assurance, it is the God who challenges us, but is also the God who encourages us. The God who confronts us is also the God who, can, who accepts us. Be assured that God is with us even now, accepting and guiding and forgiving and for this, we can say, thanks be to God. Because for the grace that God has poured into our lives, we can go forward from this place filled with gratitude, living our lives as we are called to live, in which we are reminded through the words of the prophet Micah, God has told you, old people, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God.
Let us pray. God, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. But as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear what you are saying to us. So we give this time and space to you and all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. So this morning, our scripture reading comes from the Apostle Paul's letter to the people in Philippi. As we continue the stump, the pastor, and the object that you have already seen came from Troy and Nolan. And uh, I know you're all thinking, what in the world is going to happen this morning? Well, let's first read these words from the Apostle Paul, and uh, we'll let it unfold. Starting at verse 1, reading through verse 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Odia, and I urge Sintech to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. People of God, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and sing our hymn of preparation, 349, Seek Ye First. So I have to, uh, I have to say that it has been amazing to see and hear the buzz that this toy has created this past week. People have been singing, if I had a hammer, right? They've been, I, some of you have told me about the song by Paul Seeger and, and uh, if I had a hammer, Someone even said I should be wearing MC Hammer pants this morning, but I chose not to. 
because I haven't learned those since middle school. And, uh, or maybe we could play croquet or maybe whack-a-mole, right? Even the person from the Freeman responded to the email with the sermon title and said, wow, <laughs> love the sermon title. People have asked, what are you going to do with that thing? And even after we finished 55 minutes in Bible study talking about this text, people still were like, I still don't see what you're going to do with this thing, with Paul's words. Maybe you could, or I would, you can use it as a weapon. And I, like I said, I discovered yesterday this, just yesterday that the handle squeaks when you squeeze it. That's not annoying at all, I'm sure, to mom. And while I suspect that Troy and Nolan, much to their mother's pain and agony, like to play bop each other over the head with it, right? And that one of them is probably the mole, and one of them is probably the whacker. Is Nolan, you're usually the mole. <laughs> What is the purpose of this inflatable toy hammer whack-a-mole thingy? Some websites, like stores where everything is below $5, describe it as an opportunity for colossal fun. As you enter your own comic book, and then they actually have the words kapow, bam, in the description. But when, when you look at it, what do you see? What was that? I know you see Super Blaster and Biff. Nobody knows what Biff means. Is in, yeah, we don't know, right? And Biff it over the head, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll find out, right? And so when you look at it, what do you see? Do you see a hammer? Do you see a toy? Do you see a thing of plastic, potential weapon? for children who fight. The Apostle Paul is wrapping up his letter to the church in Philippi and finally gets to a significant matter. There are two humans, two women, who were in leadership in the church and they were at odds with one another. They were in conflict, at odds with one another, and it might have been a significant matter or it might have been a small matter, we don't know. Maybe it was a big deal, maybe it wasn't. But what we know is it was enough that Paul had to write and put it in his letter to address the issue. It was big enough that Paul was concerned because what was happening as these two women, these two people in leadership in this church that had been newly formed it had a potential to impact the church and its witness in the community. So he writes to them and says, beloved friends, beloved people of God, work it out. But remember that you both belong. Remember the common oneness that you share in Christ Jesus. And let that common oneness in Christ Jesus be what binds you together. Remember that the gospel is more than this stuff that there is room for both of you. And you remember that the gospel of the love and the grace of God in Christ Jesus, there's room. So work it out, figure it out. And further, Paul writes, and church, it is your job to help them work it out. It's your job to remind them and guide them and remember that the gospel is at work in all of you. Not just people over here or people over here, but everybody, the gospel is at work. And so remember this as your common foundation and let this foundation be what brings you together. That of love and grace of God through Christ Choose unity over uniformity. 
And then Paul continues, regardless, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. He doesn't say rejoice, be happy, go lucky, walk around with a big old smile on your face all the time like life is grand. That's not what Paul is getting at. Paul is saying rejoice in the Lord. Have your focus and your mind and your heart fixed on Jesus and allow the love of Christ to fill you and fill you with this deep joy where you can say, thanks be to you. Oh, joy in your hearts because you're not alone because the Lord is near. I think that often this is a reminder that we could all use from time to time. Don't worry, but in, not be happy. <laughs> We're not um, Bobby McFerrin, right? Don't worry, but in everything, present all of the stuff that you're holding, the fear, the angst, the worry, the stress, all the stuff in your, in your hearts, all of the things that you hold and weigh heavy on your heart and in your lives, present them to God in prayer. And here's what happens. Here's what happens when we do that. There's a sense of relief, right? There's a sense of relief when we take all the stuff that we hold and we place it in God's care. That's what Paul's saying. Don't worry, but in everything, present your requests and make them be known to God. You know how many of us after dealing with and experiencing and learning of health diagnoses for either ourselves or a loved one, or we watch the news or we see what's happening in the world, we hold it, right? And we get angry and we get frustrated and we get fearful and we live with all of the stuff. That's valid. It's valid however we're feeling and whatever we're holding. I've had many people over the years say, once I remembered that, oh, I should maybe pray and give it to God, it refocused and reshifted their hearts and their minds where they were able to sigh and say, it's not going to take away my cancer, but it is going to give me the hope that, oh, the Lord is near and God's got me and it's going to be okay. This is what Paul is saying. In, don't worry about anything, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And remember that God is here and that God is near because that's what keeps us grounded. That's what keeps us grounded in the promises of God's presence and in God's love. And then finally, Paul writes, finally, people of God, beloved, remember and keep the love and grace of Christ, the foundation of your life. Keep bringing your stuff to God in prayer, letting go of all that you're holding on to so that you can hold joy and hope and life and love in your hearts giving thanks to God for God's love and grace and presence in your life. And as Paul writes in so many of his other letters, some in which we heard from just a few weeks ago with the fruits of the Spirit, think about these things. Let these things absorb you and fill you. Things that are honorable and pleasing and commendable, and the things that are give life giving and life sustaining think about and fill your lives with the things that bring hope and life peace truth and justice which brings me to this you're like well i don't know how you got there <laughs> All week long, as I've mentioned, so many folks were focused on the hammer. But what we forgot 
is what's actually inside. To make the hammer functional. Because what's inside? Air. So, children, this is where you get to come up and help me with the next part, right? And for the rest of you, you can just pray. Woo, come on, bring your goggles. All right, bring your goggles. No, no, I'm ready. So imagine, if you will, that we had some balloons up here. Well, should we not imagine? I think we should just get some balloons up here, right? All right. Yeah, that's better. Now we don't even have to imagine. So we have balloons. What do you think's in the balloons? Air? Anything else? CO2? Anything else? You think water's in one of them? Oh, I really like my job though, you guys. Sticky notes? You think something's in there. Well, shall we find out? Yeah? All right. This is why we have our safety goggles. These are not called swim goggles anymore. These are called safety goggles because we're going to, oh my goodness, um, we're going to pop the balloons to find out what's on. But because we're going to pop them, we have to have safety. It's safety first, right? Oh my. All right. We should do the orange. Mine are tint. Are yours tinted? Yours aren't. Everything is a different color. Great, I see somebody taking pictures. That's, I think yours are not tinted. I think everybody else's are. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, um, we're gonna pop this one first. What do you, I have this little pin. Yeah, you think there's sand in there? Well, put your goggles up. I'm going to pop it. We're going to find out. What? That was really loud. You know what was in there? It wasn't sand. Sand would have been a really good idea. No, it was, um, I probably shouldn't tell you because it's um, dried instant mashed potatoes. Because it made a mess, right? Yeah. So, um, I think that we're going to do the blue one next. You think anything's in this one? You think water's in this one? I didn't put water in with the mashed potatoes for a very specific reason. So, uh, all right, are you ready? You want to stand a little closer? That one was water. Did you get wet? I had one that I tried something else and it made a mess. I was thankful to be outside. Um, what about this one? I think because it's wet back here, it could be this one up here. How's that? All right, you can come closer. There's no food in this one, I promise. Oh, there are stickers. Would you each get to pick a sticker? What's in there? What does your say? It says, I am, what is it? Oh, I am special to God. I can't read them because I don't have my glasses on and I have these. God, God made me unique. What does your say? They're messages of you guys. This is not good. You are one of God's wonders. That means that you're pretty amazing and awesome. All right? And uh, we still have two more balloons. So you see what happened with the mashed potatoes in the water. What did they make? They kind of made a mess, right? And um, then what happened? Um, 
with the one with the stickers, we thought it was going to make a mess, but it was kind of nice, right? You thought it was dollar bills? That would have been amazing, right? That would have been so fun. I don't know why I didn't think about that one. But then there's this one. What do you think's in here? Shall we find out? <coughs> Nothing. It was just air. It was just air. You knew it. You were so right. This one has sticky notes. Oh. It's something, isn't it? And uh, you think it's what? Some chicken? Dollar chicken? I went to McDonald's this morning, you think? I didn't. I didn't go to McDonald's, you guys. So let's find, find this one out. Ready? Oh! What it, well, you gotta you gotta pick them up and see you can, what do they say they're little messages what what do they say on there hang on let me get the microphone so you can read you can read them what do they say it says god's love and god's peace god's presence and god's love and uh, what do you got god's presence, god's presence. God's peace. God's peace. What do you got? God's love. God's love. Yeah, they all say either God's presence, God's peace, or God's love. And here's the thing. So when you look at this, what do you see? You see a hammer, right? You see a hammer, but a super blaster. But what we should look at and remember is what's inside right, is the air. And when we, and this is what the Apostle Paul is getting at in, in Scripture, in the, in the words that we just read, is that don't allow your lives to be filled with the messy stuff, right? Like, whether it was sand or anything else or instant mashed potatoes, for shaving cream, that was the original idea. Whatever's going to make mess, right? In, in your life and in the lives of the people that we interact with. But, but air doesn't make a mess. But it's okay if we allow God's peace and God's love and God's presence to fill us. That's okay if that makes a mess, right? Because this is how we should be living our lives and thinking on these things. All right? You guys can go back to your seats and take your sticker. You can take your note as a reminder, okay? Or you could leave it up here and um, there you go. But thanks for your help. You also get to keep your swim goggles. So friends, beloved, oh, thank you. You, want to keep, you wanted that? Oh, you're picking them up for me. Um, friends, beloved, think on these things, the Apostle Paul says. Think on the things and be reminded of God's love and God's peace and God's presence and allow that to fill your heart and your lives. Be filled with the things that are honorable and true and just and commendable filled with these things. And so here's the invitation and the challenge, so that when you go through the week and the days and the life ahead of you, and you think, I'm really quite angry about something right now, and you want to actually use this, remember Paul's words. Pray and lift up your stuff to God. And then think on the things that are honorable and allow God's peace and God's love and God's presence because the Lord is near, the Lord is with you. Allow these things to fill you. 
so that it will hopefully reset and reframe your hearts and your lives. This is God at work in our lives and in the world. And we don't worry, but in everything we pray. And we rejoice in the Lord because God is near. And when we think on the things that fill us with God's love and God's peace and God's presence so that we can go into the world and be a witness and we can remember the common ground that we hold with one another because of the love of Jesus Christ. For this, we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you that even when we make a mess, that your grace abounds. But we invite you to pour your peace and your presence and your love into our lives and fill us. So that as we go out, and as you breathe us into the world, we will remember that you are with us and that you love us just like you love the brother, the sister, the sibling that's walking down the street. Allow us to remember the oneness that we share in your love and goodness. And all God's people said, Amen. So friends, God has shown us the meaning of generosity in the beautiful diversity of creation. It is in the overflowing love of Jesus Christ and in the never-ending gift of the Holy Spirit. God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that honors each other, that to serve others with joy and to share our love and material possessions. And so we can rejoice in what we have been given and what is ours to give. And so as you are able, you are invited to give back to God for the many ways God pours into our lives.
Lord God, we bless you for all your many gifts to us. And so we return these gifts as a token of our gratitude, longing for the conviction and strength to offer our whole lives to your service. And so we pray that you receive these gifts and that you will bless them. Grant them the wisdom and discernment to be that we might be good stewards of these gifts. We pray that all who receive will be encouraged in their work and that in their ministry may bear rich fruit in your kingdom. So we place these gifts in your care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, um, as we have an opportunity to respond to hearing God's word, not only through gift, but also through word, as we enter into a time of prayer, and then indeed, as we go out through those doors and uh, take the word of God with us into the community and into the world around us. So we know that Grace turned 103 this, this week. She had her birthday, was it Thursday? Thursday or Friday, um, and uh, Grace Heaney at Mountain Valley Manor, 103. So God bless her, and uh, I know that she had some family and friends nearby, well, because you were there. So, <laughs> and uh, so we we give thanks to God for Grace, and we can continue to be praying for Nancy and for Linda as they continue to recover and gain some strength. And then as we've watched the news this week. Um, we've seen two heavy losses, right? One we've seen closer to home as we've witnessed five lives who were lost in an excursion, but more importantly on this Sunday, on this Refugee Sunday, Refugee Awareness Sunday, we saw a boat with 500 migrants on it sink and over 300 lives lost. It's a sobering thing to embrace and hold the tension of the two differences in this, but that doesn't devalue anybody's life. But we can do better. We can do better. And so the prayer this morning is actually a prayer um, written specifically for Refugee Awareness Sunday. And it was written by Reverend Dr. Tim Tenclay. Um, some of you might remember J.J. Tenclay, who has preached here. Um, and who is a missionary in the Reformed Church working with migrant um, and refugee individuals. And so this is her husband, her spouse, that has written this prayer. And so let us pray. O oh God, in whose image we are created, with all of our maleness and femaleness, regardless of our darkness or lightness, we thank you for the reminder today that you are a God of love, that through Jesus we are reconciled with you, and that in Jesus we are called to be reconciled with one another. As we bow our heads, we are reminded that Jesus lived, died, rose, and ascended, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And though we often settle for a concept of salvation that is merely philosophical or emotional, we see that Jesus and his earliest disciples did not. That they, alongside of proclaiming your grace and mercy, were bearers of healing and hope for those who suffered in mind, body, spirit, and circumstance. With this in mind, O oh God, when we pray, May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For the millions of people who have been forced from their homes by extreme poverty and hunger, war, persecution, and environmental de degradation, we lift these ones up to you, O oh God. And O oh God, when we pray, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for all the men and women and children afloat on the sea, uncertain whether they will ever touch land again. And so when we pray, O oh God, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
We pray for all who travel through areas that we only see as black lines on our maps and atlases. And we place them in your faith. And oh God, when we pray, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for all who are trapped in modern day slavery, forced to work in fields and on the streets. And when we pray, O oh God, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for all of the parts of your body we are tempted to refer to as they and them. And O oh God, when we pray, your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that you don't allow us to comfort ourselves with the words we utter or the ideas that weigh heavily upon our hearts. That we can live into bringing your kingdom closer and closer. So for all these people and lives and families, both here and far, who have been impacted by tragedy and pain and loss, we pray that you surround it with your comfort and with your hope and with your love. And we thank you that you hear our prayers prayers that have been spoken, the prayers that have been whispered in the depths of our hearts. And we thank you that you hear our prayer as we share and pray together with one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing together our closing hymn, 595, 595, all the verses of They'll Know We Are Christians. <laughs>
Amen. So there's no rest for the weary because I have another bag <laughs> that I have to open. And uh, so this comes from uh, Jim and Linda Studoff. Right there. So thank you. Do you want to explain it or should I open it first? Do I have to incorporate the tissue paper? Hopefully that wasn't breakable. <laughs> Those are cool. It's just pink tissue paper, you guys. <laughs> no, it's not. It is a heart carved out of wood, and then a coral heart. And then a, oh, they're like, oh, those are very lovely. What in the world is she going to do with those? Well, you'll just have to come back next week. <laughs> right? Come back next week and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But those are good and they're very cool. I'm curious where you found these. <laughs> like yes so people of god as you go forward go forth with the love and the peace of god and god's presence go forth with god's blessing the lord bless you and keep the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace go forth in god's peace amen Oh, 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 oh.